everyone, and welcome to another InventRight.com TV show. My name is Andrew Kraus. I co-founded InventRight with successful inventor Stephen Key over 16 years ago. We coach and mentor inventors. This is our basic series. And what we're covering right now is we're going to cover provisional patent applications, commonly referred to as PPAs, provisional patent applications. And we got the right guy on. We got patent attorney Damon Kelly. Welcome, Damon. Hi, thanks for having me. So, Damon, what is a provisional patent application for people that already know they're excited about it, for people that learn about it the first time, maybe some of you here, they get really excited. Why do inventors get so excited about it and what is it? Well, what it is, is it, it's really a story. It's a story of your invention and it can be written by the inventor. Uh, and it's fairly inexpensive to file, so it's a really easy inexpensive way for inventors to get a, a some protection started for their invention and gives them this sort of peace of mind when they go out to, to pitch that it's not going to get ripped off. Damon, that doesn't sound good for you as an attorney. So uh, uh, somebody can write it in common English, they can write it themselves and it will protect them and they'll have the ability to say patent pending. Uh, do attorneys not like the provisional patent application? Well, you know, some attorneys don't like it because, as, I mean, as you point out, it, we don't make a lot of money on them. Um, I like them. I think it's, they're great. And I'll tell you why, I, for two reasons. One is that I'm very, I like inventors and I'm an inventor myself and I, I like inventors having access to the mechanisms that big corporations have. I think that's amazing and wonderful. And the second thing I like about it is we, as an inventor, when you go through writing your PPA, you suddenly realize how difficult it is to describe your invention in just plain English. So it's, it makes for a much better client for me. They, they know what they're talking about. They have thought about their invention seriously and they know how difficult it is to get it down right. So when I do my thing, you know, it doesn't seem like such a big shock and it's not like, oh, wow, what, do you, what exactly do you do, Damon? You make it look easy. It's like, well, you know, it's, it's what I do. <laughs> so if, if people have gone on to Google Patents or gone on to the Patent Office website, USPTO.gov, and they've ever read through a patent and they're like, what the hell am I reading? Um, a provisional does not need to be written like that, like an attorney would, is that correct? That's right, plain English, just plain English. Just sit down nice. and talk about your invention. And you know, the thing is, is most inventors, what, the thing they get hung up on is they wanna get it right the first time. And you don't have to get it right the first time. Just write it down, just let it come out and organize it later, you know, put it in the right order and rewrite it and it's just not that big a deal. And even if it's disorganized, you can still put that in. There's only two requirements for the provisional patent application and one of them is enablement, which means that somebody should be able to read it and then practice that invention. And the second is pay your fee. So those aren't very difficult to, to come to. You, the way you figure it out is you hand your provisional to your wife or her husband and you say, read this, can you do this? And after they get done laughing, then, then they tell you, yeah, I can do that. So that's, <laughs> that's the enablement requirement taken care of. So it really is a simple process. It, it's daunting for a lot of people because people aren't used to writing in a technical way, but you don't really have to write in a technical way. What you have to do is just tell your story. Nice, nice. One of my favorite things about the provisional patent is it allows you to put patent pending legally on your marketing materials and if you're a micro entity, um, which is somebody making, I believe, less than $150,000 in annual household income, you can file one for $65. That's the patent office filing fee. And legally say patent pending for an entire year, not even provisional patent pending, but patent pending. Is any of well, what I just said inaccurate or is that true? No, that's it seems too good to be true. That's absolutely true. And it's just, I think it's terrific that we're able to do that because, you know, it gives you that appearance of value and it gives you that legitimacy that you need when you're going to a company to, to pitch an idea. It's like, hey, I've got an idea. It's worth patenting and it says patent pending right here on the sheet. I, I think it's amazing. I, I can't think of anything more American than provisional patents. The thought that anybody for 65 bucks can get patent pending status and try, in our case, what we teach our students, try to license the product to these large companies is, is amazing. Or if you're starting your business and selling it yourself, you can delay paying for a patent and see what the interest level is first. So how does that work, Damon? Because everybody, attorneys always say provisional patent application. 
application, why do they emphasize the fact that it's an application and not a patent? So what, what, what is it, what's the timeline, what do you need to do to turn it into a patent? So to turn it into a patent, you have to turn it, you have to first uh, submit a non-provisional patent application based on that provisional application. The reason it's an application is because it expires. It expires in one year and then it's, it's done, it's over. Um, and what you have to sort of understand, and the reason why we always make that clarification uh, uh, so, so emphatically is because you don't have any patent rights to enforce with a provisional patent application. You only get patent rights that are enforceable after you've gone through the, the regular application process and after you have allowed claims. Until you have allowed claims, you don't know what you have. So what you have with a provisional is a priority date. It's, hey, I invented on this date, I filed on this date. I, this is, I have the earliest filing date and that's what it is with the provisional patent application. So that's why it's important to keep saying that because some people think, oh, I've got a provisional patent application and I wanna go sue this guy, he stole my idea. Nope, you can't no. do that. Not appropriate. Well, e even when you file a full patent, the time it's pending, you can't sue anybody for infringement until it issues. That's which right. Which I think it's faster these days, maybe two to four years. It used to be really slow. Uh, the, last, um, the, the quickest one I just had, I had a client, we, we submitted his patents in August and they've come up for examination and we got the first office action. That was just six or seven months. That's the fastest it's ever been for a mechanical patent application. Wow, that's crazy. Really fast. So let's summarize here. For $65, you can write your own provisional patent application, legally say patent pending for a year. And one of the techniques that we teach our students in InventRight when they're licensing, selling their ideas to big companies for royalties, is that if you get interest from a company, you get the company to give you the money. You give the money to a great attorney like Mr. Damon Callie here, and they file the <laughs> non-provisional patent application, then they reference the provisional, preserving that filing date. It's that stake in the sand, as Damon, I've heard Damon say, you know, for your protection being from that date. Now, if you're selling it yourself, or like our students are venturing, are licensing it for royalties, if it doesn't work out, you're not out 10 grand, you paid a patent attorney, you're out $65. I can't emphasize that enough, and you always will have the bandwidth to move on to the next product. That's so, so important. Damon, would you say it's accurate? A lot of people feel like if, if I go out and file a patent and I get a patent, that somehow it validates my idea, it makes sense, and that I will make money. Do you think, do you think that that is true of some new inventors that believe that's true? I think a lot of people believe that. I think they think that the, the patent will somehow lend legitimacy to their product. And really those are two separate questions. That whether or not you're patentable has nothing to do with if you're gonna make any money. Um, people made a lot of money on unpatented products and people have spent a lot of money on patents and never made a dime. So, you know, the, the patenting is just one part of a process that you need to put in the right place. And I think you guys do a good job of, of showing people how to do that. I'm not in the business of trying to sell you patent work that you don't need. Uh, I've often told people, you know, you're not ready for a patent yet. Come back when you're ready and we'll talk about that then. Uh, well, and Damon, Damon is one of those inventor-friendly patent attorneys. And what do I mean by that? A inventor-friendly patent attorney wouldn't try to sell you a patent if you're not ready. They, you know, and there's a lot of reasons. That's a whole nother topic. And so I hope you enjoyed this basic series. Damon, thank you so much. It was really helpful, very straightforward information. Thank you. So what we'll do is um, wrap this one up. Check out the others in the basic series. Check out our other videos on our YouTube show. I want to remind everybody to take care and keep inventing. See ya. Bye. Hi, this is Stephen Key. And I just want to thank you for watching InventRight TV. We're here to save you time, save you money, and show you how you can bring your products to market through licensing. So please, subscribe down below, click on the button, and tell your friends. Thank you.